Hey everyone, welcome back to Ritvik Math. In this video, we're going to talk about two uh, vector operations that look really, really similar to each other, but that mean two completely different things. And that's going to be the difference between x transpose y and xy transpose. The reason we're going to be talking about these two vector operations is that, uh, in my experience looking at linear algebra um, texts and the theory behind linear algebra, I mean, theory behind machine learning, um, we see that these two operations come up quite a bit. So it's going to be useful to kind of just know what these operations mean so that when you're reading through a mathematical concept um, related to machine learning or data science, you'll just be like, oh, I know what that means, rather than having to think about that every single time. Okay, so we're going to talk about what the official names for these two operations are mathematically at the end of this video. But first, just to get an idea of them, we're going to be looking at some real data and looking at a real situation, okay? The first thing to note is that for either of these operations to even make any sense, x and y, which are vectors, need to live in the same dimensional space, which just means that they need to contain the same number of elements, or else neither of these operations actually makes any sense mathematically. For our purposes, we're going to say they live in R3, which means they each have three numbers inside of them, okay? And we're going to say that x is a vector that contains different dollar amounts that you spent on a recent business trip. So we're going to say that the first one is how much you spent on food. Let's say you just spent $10 on food. Um, the next one is how much you spent on transportation. Let's say you spent 100 bucks on trans uh, transportation. The last one is how much you spent on lodging for housing. So you spent $500 on housing. Now the y vector is going to be various different tax rates. And this is how much each of these different categories is taxed. At first, that's what it's going to mean. We're going to change the meaning a little bit to talk about the second operation. But for now, think of it as I get taxed at 5% on my food, I get taxed at 10% on my transportation, and I get taxed at 20% on my housing. And by I, I mean the company's getting taxed, right? Um, so in this case, let's say we have the question of how much total is my company spending on taxes for my trip? Well, we can basically solve this without even looking at this formula yet. We're going to see why this formula gives the same answer. So we're basically going to say that, okay, I spent $10 on food, and I'm getting taxed at 5%. So that's going to be 10 times 0 0.05. Then I spent $100 on transportation, getting taxed at 10%. And finally, I spent $500 on lodging, and I'm getting taxed at 20%. So if we work that out, which we're not going to, that would be the answer to how much total taxes is my company spending for this trip. Now let's see why doing x transpose y gives us the exact same operation. So first let's write out what x transpose y looks like. So that's going to be x transpose is going to be taking this uh, column vector and transforming it into a row vector. So 10, 100, 500, that's x transpose. And then y remains, so 0 0.05, 0 0.1. And 0.2. Now this, some of you might know this as a dot product or mathematically it's also known as an inner product. We solve it by basically doing, uh, let me use a different color here, we do this first component times this first component, so that's going to be 10 times 0 0.05. We add that to the second component times the second component, so it's going to be 100 times 0 0.1, and as you might have guessed, the third component times the third component, so that's going to be 500 times 0.2. And we see that because of that, we end up with the exact same calculation as we did um, before. So that is why this thing called an inner product or a dot product, it results in a single number. If you want to be a little bit more, um, you know, concrete about it, it results in a one by one um, matrix, but we treat one by one matrices as just the single number that's contained within them, okay? So for all intents and purposes, this uh, operation returns a single number, which is the dot product or inner product of these two matrices, or two vectors, okay? The trickier one to talk about is going to be xy transpose. That's the one that doesn't come up as often, um, but it still ends up being pretty important in the study of data science and machine learning. So let me get rid of everything on this side of the board, because we're done understanding this guy. Now we've got to talk about what is xy transpose. And to talk about that, we're going to modify our setup just a little bit. So we're going to say that this is how much money you spent on the trip for food, transportation, and lodging. But now, instead of each of these percentages affecting only its corresponding uh, spending amount, we're going to say that 
all of these tax rates apply to all of these different spending amounts. So maybe think of it now as maybe it's like a city tax, a state tax, and a federal tax, for example, all of which are going to apply to each different spending amount. So now there's a little bit more moving parts, right? We would like to know this time, we want a full breakdown of how much money is going to each, um, each category, whether it's city, state, or federal tax. And also beyond that, we want to know how much is going from each different source of spending. So our result is not going to be a single number in this case. It's going to be a matrix, which each element tells us a different piece of the story. So first, let's construct that matrix. And then let's talk about why x, y transpose gives us that same exact matrix. Okay? So the matrix is going to look pretty straightforward. It's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So here, 3 by 3. The first element is going to be 10 times 0 0.05. 10 times 0 0.05. And what does that tell me? 10 times 0 0.05 basically tells me that of my uh, $10 that I spent on my food, 5% goes to city taxes. So that's the total amount that went towards city taxes for my food. Let me try to make that a little bit bigger, just so you guys can see it. So that's going to be 10 times 0 0.05 as the first element. Now what's the next element? It's going to be 10 times 0 0.1. 10 times 0 0.1. This tells me of my money spent on food, what uh, how much money is going towards the state taxes. So that's 10%. The last element is 10 times 0.2. How much of my food money went to federal taxes? Okay, I'm trying to find a good place to stand. I think it got a little bit blurry. I'm just trying to refocus this guy. Okay, and the rest should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to fill them in. So excuse the sloppiness on that one, but hopefully you can see that this is a full breakdown. I can look at any number in here and it'll tell me a piece of the story about how much of my taxes from what source is going to what destination. So for example, if I looked at, uh, let's say I looked at this guy right here, this guy says that 500 times 0.1 or $50 is going to state taxes from my lodging um, expenses. Okay, let's see why XY transpose generates the exact same matrix. So let me first get rid of this matrix. So what does XY transpose actually look like? The first thing we do is write out x, which looks like 10, 150. So 10, 150. And then we write out y transpose, which is just a row version of the y vector. 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Okay, so we go ahead and do this multiplication. In this case, uh, each element is simply done by, we have 10, we multiply it by 0 0.05. So we're going down here, we get 10 times 0 0.05. Then we get 10 times 0.1. And if it's kind of unclear what's going on, go ahead and review your rules of vector multiplication, vector matrix multiplication, because in the end, vectors are just matrices that happen to have a dimension of 1 somewhere, right? So 10 times 0.05, 10 times 0.1, 10 times 0.2. And I think I'm not going to write out the entire thing because it's pretty clear what's going on here. We have 10 times each of these things. So basically, if we're going along with the story, it says that food times each of the tax rates, transportation times each of the tax rates would be the second row, lodging times each of the tax rates would be the third row. So we end up with the exact same um, matrix as we did before. So hopefully it's a little bit more clear uh, what x, y transpose is. It's a full breakdown of each element in the first vector times each element in the second vector. So it doesn't result in a single number. It results in a 3 by 3, or more generally, n by n uh, matrix that represents those quantities. So keep in mind these two quantities are going to come up a bunch when we talk about um, topics such as principal component analysis and many other topics in data science and machine learning. Okay, so until next time.